Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm once again diving into the world of, yes, you guessed it, Stable Diffusion. Well, sort of. This is Stable Dream Fusion, a PyTorch implementation of text to 3D Dream Fusion, which is powered by Stable Diffusion. What is Dream Fusion? Well, here is some information on the original work, text to 3D using 2D diffusion. As you can see from all these various pictures spinning around, there are lots and lots of nice 3D images that have been generated from text. So before we go any further, let's just have a quick look at the important notice on here. As it says here, this project is a work in progress and you are of course also watching this in the future so things might have already changed this contains a lot of differences from the paper and also many features are not yet implemented the current generation quality cannot match the results from the original paper and many prompts still fail badly nevertheless i'm sure you can understand all of that and let's have a quick look at a couple of ways to run this i'm going to be showing basically the google colab and installing it locally as well. Of course, the easiest one is the Colab. You just click on that link. That will open up the Google Colab. You get your free Linux system over at Google with your free Tesla T4, which has 15 gig of VRAM. So very, very simple to use this. You just scroll down here to start with, and there is your prompt. So you put your text in there, and that's practically all you have to change. Once you've changed your text, you can just go to runtime at the top, and press run all or as it shows there you can press control and f9 and that will go through and do its thing now i've got my own notes here of course remember this isn't fast it will take about an hour to run so let's get this installed locally shall we i am as always using anaconda to manage my virtual python environments you too can use anaconda for free just by downloading it and installing it from www.anaconda.com or you can use Miniconda as well, whatever you want to manage your virtual Python environments. Now, installing and running it locally, incredibly simple. You want to git clone the repository as always and then change directory into your newly downloaded repository. So I'm just going to do that now. I have downloaded it into my GitHub directory because that is where I put things and it is in the stable dream fusion directory. So let's also pop in there as well. I of course have already created my Conda environment. So I'm just going to activate it. No need to recreate it. And there we go. Now, the next thing to do is install PyTorch. I like to install the very latest ones. So there it is, pytorch.org, install pip CUDA 11.6. And there is the thing that you can copy pasta. So let's copy pasta that in there. And then I have installed the very latest PyTorch with CUDA support. How easy was that? Next, you just have to pip install the requirements. There you go. Yes, you can literally just copy and paste all of this stuff in and it will install for you. So there we go. All the lines, copy, paste, do all the lines. Basically, they are down here. So you've got the install there git clone the cd the pip install with pip so run all of these things and that will get everything installed for you obviously these links are also down in the description and there is a copy of this on paste bin too now one thing to note if you're using microsoft windows and there's a little bash script there that's an install so you won't be able to run that on windows just install all those modules manually that's absolutely fine it's just running pip install for you automatically so once you've got that all up and running which only takes a few seconds then you will need to spend those hours training now the basic one there is that one there whoops without cutting it uh, so you've got your python main.py put in your text so a high quality detailed photo of a halloween pumpkin in my my case then you specify a workspace which is my test in my case and then minus o that will set some various optimizations of flags for you like ft fp16 and all that sort of stuff now as mentioned that does take about an hour to run there uh, it says minus o is cuda ray fp16 and dirtex so that's puts in those optimizations so i won't run it now as i say it does take about an hour but there it is once you've finished running it you've got a whole bunch of checkpoints a couple of checkpoints in there and you will also get 
a little run directory with all your results. You've got a depth map and also a little video. So there is my Halloween pumpkin in 3D. As you can see, it's got a little bit of a chunk on there. So it's uh, it's good. It is it is good, but it's not certainly not perfect. If you want to have a look at the validation, then that is basically how it starts off. So you get the depth maps and it sort of goes through generating the pumpkin bit by bit. Now, you can also generate an object file. As you can see in here, I've got a mesh so that has the, uh, the, the material file and the object as well. So if you want to go ahead and open up Blender, you can open up Blender. I'll take a few seconds. Let's get rid of the default cube. I'm so sorry, default cube. You can then import your Wavefront OBJ. That is in my, my test directory mesh. There is my OBJ. Let's import that. And there you go. There you have your pumpkin. So that's that's it. You can play with that in Blender now. Do whatever you want with it. Get rid of all the stuff. You know, fix it up a little bit. You've got you got your 3D model. So that's that's it. It's done it for you. Uh, now, if you want to generate that mesh, the uh, the instructions on the page there are a little bit out. Uh, this this one that they give here doesn't actually uh, generate the mesh when it says usage here. Uh, yeah, generate mesh. No, it doesn't generate a mesh. You need to add this minus minus save mesh option onto it. Uh, it does tell you up there in the other <laughs> in the other bit. But uh, yes, if you don't include the minus minus save mesh, then you won't get a mesh. So be sure to include that. You also get the GUI as well. So let's have a quick look at the GUI. Let's run that GUI. It's very much like you've just seen in Blender, but without Blender. So there it is. You can drop that control away. And, and there it is, nicely rendered as a little 3D object. We just in time for Halloween, eh? So there you go. That's one part of running it. You can also do a sort of dream fields thing. If you've uh, had a look at my dream fields video, it's very similar to that. Although the uh, the clip option for me did not work very well at all. So that's the one I ran there, which is the same text as before, a high quality detailed photo of a Halloween pumpkin. However, However, <laughs> my uh, my clip version turned out like this. Let's just show you the uh, the failure case. <laughs> so there there is my clip version of the pumpkin. As you can see, it's um yes, it's it's not much of a pumpkin, is it? So I would probably shy away from using the uh, the Dreamfields setting on it. But uh, but there you go. Anyway, it's a PyTorch implementation of text to three D Dream Fusion. Have a play with that either locally or in Google Colab. And uh, don't forget to click one of these links to learn about even more nerdy rodent geekery.